on the 24th of August 2008, Sheffield lost two of its most iconic structures. But how did two cooling towers become so iconic? This is the story of the Tinsley Towers. During the 1920s, Sheffield was an industrial powerhouse. Steelworks were scattered across the Don Valley, producing some of the world's finest steel. Along with the steelworks came the need for huge amounts of power. In 1921, the Sheffield Corporation constructed the Blackburn Meadows Power Station to help produce electricity for Sheffield's East End. However, this wasn't quite enough, as only 14 years after opening, the Blackburn Meadows Power Station underwent a huge expansion project. Part of this expansion was two brand new hyperboloid cooling towers. They were named Cooling Tower 6 and Cooling Tower 7, and they would go on to become Sheffield icons. Throughout the 1940s and 1950s, the Tinsley Towers stood proudly on the Sheffield skyline, along with the other cooling towers, as the Blackburn Meadows power station generated huge amounts of electricity to sustain Sheffield's industrial heartland. In 1959, the first section of the brand new M1 motorway was opened in the south of England. The new road slowly made its way north, and when it reached Sheffield, it would change the Don Valley skyline forever. The M1 motorway was originally planned to end in Doncaster. A smaller link road was to be built through Sheffield and Leeds to link the two major cities to the country's new motorway. However, the plans later changed and it was decided that the M1 would go all the way to Leeds, following the route of the planned Sheffield and Leeds link road. As the M1 approached Sheffield, it became apparent that a new bridge would be required to carry the motorway over the Don Valley. The answer was the Tinsley Viaduct. Standing at over 20 metres tall and over a thousand metres in length, the new Tinsley Viaduct passed just metres from the two cooling towers at Blackburn Meadows. This would later go on to save the towers from demolition. As Sheffield entered the 1970s, the city's steel industry was in decline. As the decade went on and more and more steelworks closed their doors, the demand for power declined massively. By 1980, the decision was made to close the Blackburn Meadows power station. The power station was demolished shortly after except for Cooling Tower 6 and Cooling Tower 7. Due to their proximity to the Tinsley Viaduct, engineers could not guarantee that arguably England's most important road would not be damaged in the process. As the years went by, the towers stood in isolation and watched as the Hold On Valley was redeveloped. Sheffield's once famous steelworks were replaced by hotels, retail parks and shopping centres. But the towers remained in place and were seen as a tribute to Sheffield's industrial past. Residents of Sheffield become fond of the towers, seeing them as a beacon of hope at the end of a long journey. When you see the Tinsley Towers, you know you're nearly home. Rumours of their demolition were regular, but nothing ever come to fruition, and most Sheffield residents were certain they were here to stay. In 2006, the owners of the towers, Eon Energy, announced that the towers were to be demolished. They claimed that the towers had become structurally unstable and that following strengthening works to the Tinsley Viaduct it was now possible to bring the towers down safely.
people were outraged. Multiple petitions were set up in an attempt to save the towers, and Sheffield resident Kyle Emerson even submitted an emergency listing application to English Heritage. This is the response he received. Dear Mr Emerson, Thank you for your email about the cooling towers adjacent to the Tinsley Viaduct. The towers are the only surviving portions of the Blackburn Meadows Electricity Generating Station and were built in 1937-38. The rest of the plant was demolished in the 1980s, but the towers survived due to their nearness to the Tinsley Viaduct. I understand that following strengthening works to the Tinsley Viaduct, it is now possible to bring the towers down without the risk of damage. The towers are a significant landmark and are also the earliest known surviving cooling towers of the hyperbolic form. Following a request to list, they have been subject of a detailed assessment by English Heritage's Heritage Protection Team. They recognise the rarity of the towers, but consider that the almost complete loss of internal features, as well as the clearance of the rest of the power station, means that they do not merit designation either by listing or scheduling. I'm sorry that this will come as a disappointment to you and wish you well with your efforts to retain the towers. Multiple plans of how the towers could be reimagined were drawn up, but none ever happened. On the 12th of August 2008, a demolition date was finally set. They would be brought down in the early hours of the 24th of August. The Tinsley Towers had finally been defeated. Over the coming weeks, high explosives were placed at the base of the towers as they prepared to say goodbye to Sheffield forever. As the sun set over Sheffield on the 23rd of August, thousands of people gathered to say goodbye to two of Sheffield's most famous residents. As the clock struck 3am, the klaxon sounded, and after 70 years of watching over Sheffield, the Tinsley Towers finally fell. Since their demolition, the Don Valley has always felt a little bit empty. Despite their unappealing colour and sometimes grotty appearance, these two concrete structures somehow found their way into the hearts of millions of people. <laughs>